Welcome to the mystical future year of 2009! Raven Software is about to blow the gaming community's fucking minds by dropping the next installment in a long lineage of Wolfenstein games. This time, instead of a World War II adventure, it's a paranormal World War II adventure. So BAM! It drops on GameStop shelves across the nation. And how is it received? Average to below average. This thing only sold like a hundred thousand copies in its first month. That's a- That's a- That's a- Big, uh, Roblox oof. oof. In fact, it's so average that the game wouldn't be rebooted for another five years. Fast forward time! to 2011. I'm a dumbass, cringy ass kid, and I'm about to, I'm saving my allowance to finally upgrade from my PS1 and Dreamcast with about five games between them. That's not an exaggeration. Pretty much every day I'm watching game reviews and playthroughs on YouTube, but especially classic goddamn game room. If not for this man, my taste in video games would be completely different today, and by extension, the entire world. One of these days when my dorky little ass was on the family computer, I stumbled across this bad boy. The game is called Wolfenstein, but may I suggest a more appropriate title? was straight captivated by that. Fast forward again! I have my console, I have some games, and I'm still cringy as fuck. I beg my older sister to drive my dumbass to my favorite game trade in place, Brian's Video Tater. The art fell off <laughs> the sign. Whilst perusing the large wall of mostly shitty used PS3 games, I see this face stick out at me, and I snatch that bad boy off the shelf so fast you'd almost believe I was active in any capacity. I take that disc and I shove that bad boy all up in my PS3. The years go on, I play it, I suck at it, and I love it. Like, it's pretty much one of my favorite games. Fast forward one more time! I'm an adult. <laughs> Brace yourself, believe it or not, I'm still cringy as fuck. In pretty much any conversation I have about games we like, I mention Wolfenstein 2009, and I get looks like this, and this, and this. And I'm here wondering, did that game just fucking suck the whole time? So I sit down to play it again, like all last week, and I record it, and I write a script for a video, and I set up to shoot the video, and then I don't know what happens. So what did I think with my adult mind, you screech? Well, let's find out. It opens with this pre-rendered cutscene, which is pretty much how normal graphics look now. Then we get this logo screen, which I think is rad as fuck. We cut to another in-engine cutscene that's a pretty drastic downgrade. Here's the thing about, about the graphics in this game. They look really cool uh, when you're running around, but if you stop and look at anything, boy does it show its age. Now. Let's talk about this story. The fuck it sucks. But that's okay. Honestly, the story does its best to stay out of your way and just kind of string along some cool missions so you can, you know, run off and have your little fun little Nazi killing time. This game feels so good to play. And that's thanks in large part to the uh, very textured graphics. Controller vibration, bullet impacts, music, but mainly the sound design. Holy shit, I forgot how good the sound was in this game. Once you finish up with all that goofy shit, you get plopped in the middle of Wolfenstein 2009's oh Open God. World! Or Hug World! Now this is a place that I very strangely and very nostalgically feel uh, comfortable and at home. This is kind of a sticking point with critics, they didn't really like the open world, but I actually love it. I love being able to 
swerve in and out between uh, buildings and alleyways and in the sewers and on rooftops, you know? I, especially when the city becomes like way more populated with Nazis. Which leads me to upgrades. The upgrades fucking rock my ass in a good way. Each upgrade dramatically alters the look, the sound, the way a weapon plays. It just, it's just, mwah. I'm a sucker for upgrades that actually change the view of the weapon. Anyway, you meet Forgettable McForgettable Face, she tells you to go to a dig site. Where you can find this amulet thing, I never learned what it was called, to give you superpowers. That's right, you get superpowers in this game. What's that? What's that, child? Open areas? What? Weapons that change... <laughs> upgradable weapons that not only change how the weapon works, but how they look? Superpowers? Is this just World War II Bioshock with a shitty story? Yes, and that's a good thing. I think that the elements that they borrow from that game are really well implemented, so I ain't mad about it. So once you get out of the caves, the gameplay loop continues. You get some missions, you go do the missions, you upgrade your weapons, rinse, repeat, until the city looks like this, your weapons look like this, and the missions are like, Fucking bullshit like this. I actually do love the missions a lot. The difficulty ramps up like crazy. But then again, I, I suck at video games and I always have. So, I mean, take that into account. Look at this mission where you go into a farm and then you realize that underneath the farm is this whole ass Nazi like science base. And then you end up like releasing people dogs that are made out of villagers that the Nazis have, have like the flied into horrible monsters. Operation Paperclip this, you bitch. And then there's this scary ass hospital with this guy who literally gave me nightmares as a kid. Who else is crazy nostalgic and like comfortable in graphics from this era that look like this? Like I'm the kind of guy who just like put on YouTube or something and just walk around Liberty City just looking up at the buildings and shit. That's the kind of guy who you're getting this opinion from, so I mean, you've been warned. When I was a kid, I went on a road trip in Just Cause 2 in a truck from one corner of the map to the other. Fucking vibes. So without giving anything else away, the game holds up pretty damn darn well. So why'd it get so fucking shit buried when it came out? Well, I believe it has something to do with the dirtiest of words. CONTEXT! It was 2009. First person shooters were pretty much every game. The main complaint I read in reviews was that Wolfenstein 2009 didn't change up the formula enough. Yeah, I'll never understand games journalism. This, super praiseworthy. This, come on guys, this played out. Do you have like a creative bone in your body, you fucking dungus? There's also a matter of the multiplayer apparently sucking, but that's never mattered less than it does now considering the servers are more barren than your mom. But in conclusion, uh, I think I can see past my nostalgia. I know a lot of this has been orbiting nostalgia, but even taking that out of the equation as best as I can, I can still recommend this game if you're looking for a shooter of the era. Uh, it's kind of a hidden gem. I mean, honestly, just give it love. It's, it sucks that it got so shit canned just because of the time it came out. And Zooey Mama does it hold a place in my heart. But that's just a theory. Okay. Today's song is G.I.S.O. by King I.S.O. Just by virtue of it being stuck in my fucking head for the last week and I can't get it out, please help. It's a really simple beat uh, and he, the dude just goes off like a fucking AK through the entire thing. Like, like this is like real skill on display. I've been super into fast hip hop lately and uh, if you haven't really delved into that, I think it's my favorite genre of hip hop. Subgenre, whatever. I'm not some kind of fucking music nerd. Anyway, this video took forever. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you lick and subscribe. Share it around with your friends, you know? Send this to your grandma. If she likes uh, late 2000s FPSs, which I'm sure she does. Have you asked her about it? No. Buh. Of course, you forgot something, you fucking adoit. Oh my god.